you touched on it, but this letter was written by which one of the brothers? It was written to a cousin. It was written to a cousin who passed away, I believe, in 2003. And so it was got... never part of either of the trials before. Correct. And, the, um, and uh, when he passed away, his items went to another relative, all of his personal property. Uh, that was then the personal property later was gone through. This letter was produced and the letter predates all of this and is just chilling chilling when you read it. This was done before any violence, before any kind of uh, defense uh, The many years prior. So that is very compelling and I would argue corroborative of the uh, defense in this case. So let's do a little moot court here. So I'm going to be the prosecutor um, and uh, what I'm going to say to the motion for a new trial is, um, look, let's say it happened. Let's say that Jose molested uh, Eric and Lyle. Um, what they did was when there was no danger to them, they snuck into the house, they took a rifle as Kitty and Jose were eating ice cream on the sofa, and they blew their brains out and then tried to cover it up, um, that, saying that they were at the movies and they made this phone, this hysterical phone call. And yeah, if they did molest him, how does that in any way, shape, or form not amount still to premeditated murder? So that's the prosecution. What do you say? I agree. And what I would say is juror number one heard all of this except Menudo and except the letter in real time. And they still, six of those jurors, six and nine jurors, because there were two juries, voted for acquittal on the murder. They were given the jury instructions. They decided it on the facts and the facts were not as robust as the facts are now. So I that your argument is a great argument if you exclude all of the evidence, which is what happened in trial number two.